Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80 Slashers YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I will be discussing the 1986 slasher film, Bloodhook. Um, so yeah, in this video we'll, we'll talk about, you know, I'll talk about the, you know, the plot of this film, uh, the setting, the kills, you know, any nudity, um, the Blu-ray itself, um, before wrapping it up with some, just some final thoughts. So yeah, so, uh, let's, let, let's just get right into it. Um, so yeah, so this is a film, um, it was made in, uh, it's a 1986 film. Now, it, it wasn't actually released, um, in the U.S. until 1987. Um, but it, it is a, um, it's credited as a 1986 film. Um, now, interesting, this is actually a, um, uh, a trauma film. There's, uh, you know, Lloyd Kaufman, um, trauma is, is linked to this film, which is interesting. They've, um, they've dabbled before in the 80s slasher genre. Um, you know, Mother's Day, um, and Splatter University are, are two that I can think of. Um, so yeah, this is something that they've done and there's, um, there is like a, I, I guess you could say like a trauma sense of humor. Um, the director of this film is actually one of the guys involved, later involved with, um, Mystery Science Theater 3000. So yeah, there's that humor aspect of that, um, within this film. Um, I, I don't know... If this is this this is a strange one, the the type of slasher it is, because I I'm not sure if it was intended as like a like a slasher spoof. Um, I, I don't think it was, but there was clearly an intentional type of humor um, that was that was you know that that was put into this film. So it's kind of walking the line between you know spoof and um, just like a, a comedy slasher. I, I don't know, it, it's kind of a weird thing. We'll, we'll talk about that as, as we get further into this. Um, but yeah, that's the type of film this is. Um, it's silly. It's, it's kind of a silly film. Now, um, this particular version, again, we'll talk about it when we get onto the Blu-ray. Um, this is released by Vinegar Syndrome. And the, there's only one viewing option for this film, and it's the director's cut. And the director's cut is one hour and 51 minutes long. Um, apparently there, there is another version that is about an hour and 32 minutes. Um, but this is, this is the only version that we have. And that's, it, like, straight out of the gate, this is, that's, it's way too long for a slasher film. Any slasher film, especially an 80s slasher film, shouldn't be almost two hours. Um, way too long. I don't know. I, I wish we would have had another option because I would have I would have chosen the shorter option because, um, yeah, like it's just I don't know, just just way way too long for this film. So anyway, so that that's just kind of a quick rundown of of what this is, what you can expect. Um. So yeah. So let's just get right into um. Let's get into the plot. All right, so the plot of this film, basically, it's kind of your typical, um, typical slasher formula. There's, you know, a, a kid who had, a, you know, a, a traumatic experience when he was a, when he was a young kid. Um, you know, flash forward, I think this is flash forward about, you know, 17 years. And, um, you know, the kid has grown up now, early 20s, and he inherit, inherits a piece of, you know, a piece of property. Um, so him and his friends go up, you know, for the first time since he, since the traumatic event, he goes to this, this, it's a, like a cabin on a lake, you know, to, to do whatever, go out and party and, and look at his new property. Um, and yeah, him and his friends go up there and, it, and they just happen to be going up to this, it, it's a lake and it, there's like a, a, a fishing contest going on. When, when, when they arrive, um, musky, musky madness is, I believe, what it's called, and, um, yeah, they, they go up there, and, um, people start getting killed, um, that's, that's pretty much it, and, you know, the, the, the main, the main character, um, he's trying to deal with the traumatic experience when he was a kid and it's you know coming to the front in modern times when this was taking place and he's dealing with that and he's trying to 
you know, his friends are pushing him to do this and do that, and he's, they don't really know the secret that he, that he has of what happened when he's a kid, and, you know, there's this convoluted plot like that, um, and, yeah, there's a, there's a killer on the loose, so, that's basically it, not a, not, not a complicated, um, setup, um, you know, very typical for these type of films, um, so, yeah, so that, that's just, like, a brief, you know, brief, brief rundown, um, so, this film, of course, the, um, the, the acting in this film is, is not good. There, there, there's a couple actors who are, um, average. You know, there's no good actors, but there's some actors that are, that are average. But for the most part, a lot of them are bad actors, which is fine. You know, I, for these type of films, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what I expect. And that's what I kind of, that's what I kind of want. So, um, that's all right. I don't mind the bad acting. Now, there are a, a couple of characters in this film that are really cliche '80s characters, <clears throat> like the way they dress, like the crazy style, the hairstyles, um, and just the way they talk. Like, like, like the, there's a girl. She's always talking like you know, like when they're saying like, 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 wow, like, 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 like a lot of that stuff, and it's just. Um, it's kind of funny and charming at first, um, but it does get a little old, um, because they're, they're, like, the only two, so it kind of stands, like, like if, if the whole cast was doing it, it might have been more, more charming, but it's just these, these two characters, and it's, it's, like, the, the dialogue was written just to, you know, poke fun of the way that some of these people speak, um, so I don't know, it's, you know, this was, um, <laughs> it was 86, so this was the height of that. So maybe it was maybe it was natural, but I feel like it was more of a written thing to try to add some humor. And it was just at times it was just a little little over the top, but you know, it, it's fine. It, it's just a small little gripe. Um now the I'll be honest. I um this I I'm, I'm not a big fan of this film. <laughs> I'm just going to quote and say it. And you, you'll see why as I continue. But um, the, the the biggest problem I had is is the plot for this film, I found, was just all over the place. Um, there was just so many things in the plot that, that didn't make sense. And when they didn't make sense, they tried to write in explanations that, that didn't make sense. Now, you know, I, I get it. This is an 80s slasher. And we don't watch these films for you know, really nicely written plots. Um, but they have to be at least coherent for me, and they have to not be so, st like, stupid or so unbelievable that they actually take you out of the movie because you just, something's said or something's done, and you just, like, yeah, you, you step back, and you're just like, what? Like, and, you, and you're trying to analyze it in your head, like, trying to make sense of it while the, the film keeps playing, and, and, you, and you miss stuff, and it, cause it just, it just kind of, I don't know, it just takes me right out of it, and I, I, I don't, I don't like that, I don't like big, glaring holes in the story, so, um, yeah, I, that, that's, like, the biggest issue I have is just the plot is just all over the place, um, you know, there's, there's so many, like, so many of the characters in this just do so many stupid things, um, like even like I said, even for an eighty slasher, they just do so many stupid things. It's just it's just it's not believable. It's just I don't know. Again, it just comes back to a poor script. But like, you know, there, there's things like uh, like people get killed, and then it's just okay. Like these these people like their their best friends get killed, and they just like okay. And there's no fear. There's no there, there's no terror. They just go back to relaxing and sunbathing and f forget about it. Um, there's stuff like, like so, someone's wife getting killed and gone missing. They don't care. The, the kids and the husband go fishing and don't even mention it. And you're just like, well, what? Like, what? Like, why are they doing this? Like, didn't, didn't don't they realize their, the mother is gone? It's just stuff like that. It's just, it, it, it makes me scratch my head and it really takes me out of it. Um... So yeah, so it's just, I don't know, stuff like that, and for the plot, it just, it's a little too much. I just wish the script would have been a little tighter, and it, it's, for, for me, unfortunately, it's kind of the down, the downfall of, of this film. 
Um, yeah, so that's 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 all I really have to say with the plot. Like, I just uh, not a fan. Um, like, and I, again, I don't know if if this is like a like a spoof thing. Like, it was intentional, but I just the way it played out, I just I just don't think it was. I think it was just a like a lazy screenwriting. Like, they just they wanted to get from a a to z and um they just they did what they need to do to get there and if it was too big of a weirdness they would they would throw in some some dialogue to try to cover it up but it just it just didn't work um and you know for an 80s slasher that's that's saying something cuz i i'm pretty forgiving for a lot of these things this one i had trouble with so yeah uh so yeah so that's basically it for the plot so let's um Let's take a look at the uh, the setting. All right, so um, this film it was filmed in uh, Wisconsin, like I said, up around like a lake setting, and the the, the lake area is really nice, um, very scenic. Um, it, it's it's just a it's a really good setting for a slasher film, I, I think. Um, there's a lot of like. Uh, there's like a lot of rustic charm, if that makes sense. It's just, you know, there's a lot of like, um, like nice, um, you know, fishing cabins. Then there's some older, rundown fishing cabins, locals who have their homes around the lake, bait shops, restaurants. It's just, um, like a small town lake, um, community feel, you know, and it's, uh, you know, people on vacation, people, you know, competing in contests. It's just, it, it's a good... It just has a good small town feel. Like I said, a lot of nice scenic nature shots, which I really like in my films. Um, yeah, so I I, I really like I, I I like the setting in this film. Um, there's a lot of scenes that take place where characters are like alone out on the water, and you know I I that that's another element that I like because it, it it does provide good. Um, like, like an isolation, you know, like if you're out alone in like a canoe or a boat in the middle of the lake and there's a killer out there, it's, um, yeah, that, it's kind of, um, you know, you got that like, like kind of like the Jaws thing going on. Like when you're on water, it just, it adds an extra layer of fear for me anyway. So I like that. And a lot of these scenes, not only like there's a lot in the daytime, but there's a lot at nighttime and for whatever reason, um, like dark, dark water, man. Dark water scenes are scary to me. Um, I don't know. So, um, this was for for a slasher. I feel like it, it was a good setting, and you know, to be honest, the, the setting in this film is is probably the um, probably the star of the show. Um, you know, we'll we'll get to that why very soon. But um, yeah, I I like the setting. It's a it's a fun setting. Um, um, yeah. Uh, all right. So <laughs> let's, I guess we'll move on, um, to the kills. All right. So, uh, Bloodhook has a total, um, of five kills that I counted. Um, and you know, that's a, um, it's a fairly low body count, um, for me, for an 80s slasher, um, th I guess the good thing is they are fairly spread out evenly. Some sometimes you get like all the kills right at the end. Um, the kill the killing doesn't start right away, but it's not too long until you get your first kill. You don't have to wait too long because they're setting up the stuff, the story and whatnot. Um, so yeah, you don't have to wait too long, and then they're 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 spaced apart pretty evenly. It doesn't seem too rushed at the end like some some of these films tend to do. Um, so pacing wise, it, it's good. Um, now <laughs> the, the, the weapon of choice, um, in this film is, you can see it right here. It's like a giant fishing lure, like the, like this red and white thing with like many hooks, like on the side, on the end. And the killer is like, you know, casting his, 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 his fishing pole with this giant lure. It must be like. I don't know, like a good, like a, a, a foot long, and the hooks are big, and he's casting this lure, and, uh, like, hooking people in the gut, hooking them, like, on the side of their face, under the chin, um, yeah, it, it it's, um, it, it's silly, again, it, it's, this, this is where I get the feeling, like, maybe this was 
made as a spoofish kind of thing because like who who uses a fishing lure as a as, as a as a weapon um so it's silly it's kind of funny um but it's not you know it's not intimidating it's not fearful you know like you get hooked with a thing you just whip it out you know but anyway that doesn't happen in this it's it is a big hook but anyway whatever it, it's silly um so yeah see so, see so, so you got you got that it's you know it's whatever um now the problem I have with the kills is that there's not too many practical effects. Mostly, it's just blood. You know, the, the hook gets someone, and then they're grabbing their face or their chest, and there's, like, some blood. And the blood is, like, a weird color. It doesn't look like... It looks like fake blood. Um, so, yeah, so that's... You know, that, that kind of sucks. I don't... I don't... I, I, I want really cool practical effects. Now, there's, there's one... There's one really good effect. Um, you know, and it involves, like, a... Um, it's like post kill, but it's like a fake, like a whole fake head, and um, the killer takes like a, like when you like have a fish and you like, you string up the fish through through its jaw, you know, so on a rope so you can carry the the fish back to your boat or whatever, and he does that with someone's with someone's head, and you know puts puts the rope and the hook through the jaw and it's it's really graphic. It stays there for a long time. It's clearly a, a fake a fake head but it looks good and it's a really good effect so i'm going to give it credit for that um but yeah that's that's about the highlight for um for for, for the kills and the practical effects um and and, and like, like there's some kills like you're not even sure if people get killed it's um some of them are like so weak they're like oh are they dead or cause it's not like you don't see like heads getting chopped off or anything like that when when you know, like, oh, that person's definitely dead, it's kind of like, uh, well, I guess they're gone, like, I guess they're dead kind of thing, and there's times when they come back, and like, oh, I thought they were dead, and I guess they're not dead, it's, it just left things, like, very unclear at times, which I, I didn't like, like, when someone gets killed in one of these films, like, I want them, I want it to be, you know, you know, definitive, like, oh, they're, they're definitely dead, I don't, I don't like these unanswered questions, like, trying to trick you, or what, whatever, I don't know, um, so yeah, so that's kind of, that was kind of a letdown, um, and then, um, the, the explanation at the end of this film for the, the killer's motives, and why they're doing what they're doing, again, on par with the rest of the script, it's, it's silly, um, it, it's, does it make sense? I don't know. Probably not. I don't. I don't know enough about the science, or you know, I'm not going to get into it. But it's, um, yeah. Again, it's just an issue with the script. It's lazy writing. It's not. I just didn't. I kind of just shook my head. I'm like, okay, that's whatever. You know, it's kind of a silly thing. So, um, so yeah. So overall, the kills. You know, there were some decent, decent, not great, decent blood effects. You know, one really good practical effect. Um, but just not enough to, to not make it, a, the kills a disappointment, and they, they kind of were, they're kind of a disappointment for me for this one, so, yeah, that's, um, that's basically the rundown on the kills in Bloodhook. Alright, so, um, let's talk about the nudity. Okay, so, um, nudity in Bloodhook zero no nudity which is again really a letdown you know when you're looking at, at these films you want good kills you want a cool setting and you want you want a little bit of titillation a little nudity it just it's it's what you expect it's what these films usually have and you know the, the kills were kind of a letdown and the nudity is a letdown um you know the most we get here we get you know i think there's like a um, like a topless sunbathing scene. I mean, she's face down, so you get to see her backside. You get to see, um, you know, a couple, like, you know, bathing suit slash bikini shots. Um, and the highlight, you know, in terms of nudity, there is, um, there's a shot with some, like, uh, I guess you would call it side boob. Um, that's it. That, that, that's the highlight for this film. Um, so, uh, yeah, disappointing, um, you know, especially when you get a cover like this, a, the cover shows a girl in a bikini, and you're like, okay, there's gonna be some, you know, that's what these films have, that's what you expect, so, kind of a letdown. There, there, there's a couple love scenes, they're really awkward, they're, like, this, the, the actors, characters had no chemistry, um, really forced, 
um, in in Force, there's like a a love triangle they they tried to put in. Just again, like it's almost a two hour movie, so they're forcing these things in. So there's this forced love triangle that doesn't work. Again, another issue with the script. Um, I don't know. I I haven't seen the the regular non director's cut that has twenty some extra minutes um, cut out. I'm assuming this forced little love triangle was one of them because it wasn't needed. It was silly. It was, it was ridiculous. So, um, yeah, that's that's it for for the nudity. Not not much to speak of. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's move on and talk about the uh, the Blu-ray itself. All right. So, um, like I said, this Blu-ray. It was released by uh, Vinegar Syndrome, and you know these guys, they're they're probably my favorite um, boutique label for releasing eighty slashers. They're 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 still putting them out. They're still putting them out every couple months. We're getting a new one, so I don't want to I don't want to talk bad about them at all. And this this is a this is a good release. I, I'm glad I have it. Um, even though, like I said, you, you can probably tell by the by the review, I'm not digging the movie that much. Um, this is a good release. Um, now the the image we get in this, it's again, it's it's probably a product of, of the source material, but it's it's a little soft. There's nothing that's super sharp. There's not a lot of sharp details, um, and you know it's it's a little grainy. Now again, a lot of this was filmed outside, and I find that you know films that are shot outside, you know, natural lighting and whatnot, um, they tend to be a little softer. You know, if if you're inside, close up shots. You know, studio lighting. Um, a lot of the, the the images are you know really razor sharp on on the, these. And, and Vinegar Syndrome does a good job for some of those films. This is the best they're going to get out of the source material. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a soft image and pretty. There's there's a lot of scenes that are really grainy. Um, not I, I shouldn't say really grainy. Gra there's noticeable grain. Um, Audio's fine, you know, there's nothing wrong with the audio. It's nice, clean, clear audio track. Um, so that's good. And so yeah, so audio, video, um, probably the best you're, you're, we're ever going to get is this right here. So you can't complain, you know, they, they Vinegar Syndrome did a, did a good job. So if you want to see this movie in the best way possible, this is clearly the, clearly the one to get. Um, it is region free, yeah, ABC, so, you know, you can pick it up wherever. Um... You get, like I say, we get the uh, you get a DVD and you get a Blu-ray and there is reversible cover art. Um, this is the one that it, that it Vinegar Syndrome ships it with. Um, um, yeah, that's that's okay. It's not bad. Um, I obviously prefer the the old school one, so that's what that's what I go with. There was a um, slip cover with this that came with it. That's probably all sold out now. Um, so when I got mine, it, it didn't come with that. Um, yeah, like I always appreciate the reversible cover art. Um, in terms of um, special features, like I said, yeah, it's a newly scanned restore of 2K from 16. Okay, so there you go. So I did. I didn't even see that. So 16 millimeter original. That's clearly why it was a little soft and a little grainy. Um, yeah, if this would have been filmed on 35 mil, um, it would have been. Uh, a lot more sharper, less less grain. So yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Um, so yeah, so there you go. So I, I take back what I said. For sixteen millimeter, this looks great. They did a really good job on for a sixteen millimeter print. Um, and yeah, the the thing you get you get about five five interviews with cast and 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 crew. Um, so those are good. You know, it's always nice to to, to get some behind the scenes um, info on the making of the film, and then you regular, you know, trailer and picture gallery and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's that that that's basically it. That's the Blu-ray. That's what you get. It it it's a good release. Like I said, it's it's the best way you're gonna you're gonna get to to experience the film. So um, I definitely recommend people picking it up. All right, let's uh, let's finish this up with some uh, some final thoughts. All right, so Bloodhook, um, like I said, as you can tell by by the tone of this review, I'm I, I'm not a not a big fan. I wasn't a big fan of this film. Um, it's just it doesn't have 
all the stuff that I that I want and expect in 80 slash here. There there's not enough gore. There there's no nudity. Um and like I said, the biggest offender is is just the script. It's just too many things don't make sense. Um and the fact that I had to watch a two hour film of this, it's just it it, it certain times it it was it became a chore to sit through some of this just cuz it, it it should have been cut out like the stuff that we didn't need to see in this slasher um if it would have been good content good written dialogue and everything then yeah i i i, I would have been all for it a nearly 2 hour film but when it's all of when the script and the plot is all over the place things not making sense just characters doing stuff you're just like what and just scratching your head it's um yeah it's too bad so, um, like I said, the, the star of this film is the setting. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, it's not like it's, it's like one of the best settings of all time, but it's in comparison to the rest of the film, the setting is, is, the, is the best part of this film. Um, now if, if you're, if you're fans who like, you know, the cheesy, silly, um, comedy aspects of horror films, then, you know, you may like this more than I did. Um, I just, I don't know. There was something about this. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It didn't have the elements that I typically want in an 80s slasher. So I just, I can't, I can't get behind it too much with a recommendation. Um, you know, if, if you're, if you're like me and you're a diehard slasher fan and you want to see them all, then obviously go check it out. And, you know, maybe upon my next, my next rewatch, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it'll get worse. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Bl blood hook. Um, a little disappointing for me. Um, all right, guys. So just want to quick thanks for uh, everyone who's been uh, watching these videos. Uh, you know, subscribing, leaving comments, thumbs up, all that stuff. Greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, and uh, if you know, if you like these reviews, um, I'll put a uh, a couple more um, similar type reviews on the screen here. You can check out. And uh, yeah, until next time. All right, guys. See ya.